was born in Bethlehem. Shepherds declared that angels announced his birth. Now that caused a stir. When men came asking, where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star and have come to worship him. Herod was filled with wrath. The babe is now a man teaching a new doctrine with compassion and authority. The people are following him. The chief priests and elders are outraged. There's a mob outside of Pilate's hall. Something's happening. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Let's all stand together. Everybody's not awake yet. Good morning. Yeah, that's better. Let's sing. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. We're leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Amen. What a fellowship. What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. On the everlasting arms, oh, how bright the 
this morning. Let's continue worshiping. Joy, oh my 
I shall go there to dwell. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. He tries to get me. He tries to get me, but I, I'm, I'm getting smarter on that. Glad you guys are here today. Uh, did y'all hear about the horrible accident yesterday on I-10? A, a, a large uh, VIX vapor rub truck turned over. Did y'all hear about that? There was no congestion for eight hours, though. When I say that I need the snare, I need the snare there, Chad. When I Thank you. I'll be here all week. So anyway, we're glad you guys are here today. If you're a guest of ours, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being a part of our worship and uh, joining with us today at Central. It's going to be a great day. It is cooler in here than it is out there. Say amen. amen. We're grateful for that. And uh, we want to welcome you, if, especially if you're a guest. We ask you to do us a simple favor, and that is to take the Connect card that's in the seat back in front of you and go ahead and fill that card out. At the end of the service, you can meet me in our Connect table that's right in the lobby to the left, and I'll be happy to meet you. We've got a gift bag filled with all kinds of goodies and information about our church. I would love to meet you, shake your hand, and uh, share with you some of the things that God is doing here at Central. Okay, that's what we ask. Also, if you do that, we've got a gift a gift card from Chick-fil-A for you today. All right, so go ahead and do that. If that's a little bit of a thing that'll make you push that way, we'll do that for you, all right? All right, a couple quick announcements. The one that I have is that August the 20th, men, August 20th, is our men's, our next men's prayer breakfast, 8 a.m. right in our Family Life Center. Uh, you can sign up online, cbc.live, cbc live and you'll see our sign up button you'll see right at the top will be a men's prayer breakfast click that link and it'll take you to the form the reason we ask you to sign up for that is so we can know how much food to prepare for so that's coming up a little over a month from now but let's get it rolling get everybody signed up and all that good stuff all right let's pray we've had good worship was the choir phenomenal would you give the choir a hand on that and sharon great job sharon fantastic job we loved that Let's pray. We'll continue our worship. God, we love you. We ask that your spirit would remain in this place. Help us, God, not to quench you, but to keep you at the forefront of our minds, at the center of everything that is done today. 
Lord Jesus, forgive us for our pride. Hear this prayer and our worship today as we study your word, as we give, as we uh, celebrate just being your children. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. And we've got preacher is going to, oh, there he is. He's going to give us a little uh, information real quick. Have y'all come up with me, would you please? You know, the Bible says in the 127th Psalm that children are a heritage of the Lord and they are the blessings of our life. And the Bible says that children are like an arrow in the hand of an archer. And it's up to parents to point those arrows in the way they should go and shoot them out to change the world for Jesus Christ. This morning, Jeff, Christina, they come this morning along with their son Matthew and their daughter Faith and little Samuel. And they've come to dedicate him to the Lord. You know, there was another... Samuel, who was dedicated in the Bible. In fact, it says that Hannah prayed that God would give her a son. And when he was weaned, when he was about four, maybe five years old, she brought him down to the temple. And when she had weaned him, she took him with her with three bullocks and one ephod of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And he was a child that was young. And it says, for she said, this is the child that I prayed for. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petitions, which I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he is lent to the Lord. And she worshiped the Lord there. Little Samuel is a gift. Come up here, this preacher, for a minute. Come up here. Yeah. Does he look sharp this morning? Amen. <laughs> Jeff and Christina bring little Samuel this morning and said, he's a gift that God gave us. And we want him to change the world for Jesus Christ. And we're going to pray that God would enable them to raise him in a Christian home with a great Christian influence. When he accepts the Lord Jesus Christ one day, he is going to change the world for Jesus Christ. Sam, Sam, the whole preacher said, let's pray together. Can we? Can we pray? Yeah. Father, thank you this morning for this precious family. And Lord, they thank you that you have given them these precious children. Little Samuel, Lord, being the youngest, and they come today and ask you, Lord, that you would enable them to raise him in a good, strong Christian home. May their life reflect the love of Jesus Christ. May big brother Matthew and sister Faith, Lord, may they be a great influence upon his life. We pray, Lord, today that Samuel one day will be used greatly in the service of our Lord Jesus Christ to touch hearts and lives for the kingdom of God. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Preacher loves you. You should, well, thank you. You're gonna go back, mom and dad. You're gonna pray for the gonna you're gonna pray for the my mind my mind went blank. We're gonna pray for the Harper family. Right? Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Let's all stand together and continue worshiping this morning. I will not be shaken. He is my rock and my shield.
singing this morning. You may be seated.
would this morning open your Bibles to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. As soon as you get there, you can stand with me for the reading of the Word of God. This morning, we're going to start a series on faith. Because the Word of God has so much to say on the subject. And we want to deal with it from a biblical perspective. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him before his translation. He had the testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is, that he exists, that he is there, and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Father, as we approach your word today, we thank you that you have joined us in your house as we have come to worship you, and yet, Lord, we have come into this place, and we're asking you that you would touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our lives. And Lord, when we leave this place today, may it be our heartfelt testimony that we have met with the Lord. I pray that you would empower me with your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that your word would go forth on hearts that are ready to receive it. And I pray, Lord, this day that you would be honored with everything that's done in this place. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You know, a preacher keeps little notes in his Bible to help me remember and stay on track. Let me just read you real quick, like, a couple of my little notes. Remember, Larry, that God is always in the process of teaching us, training us, and taking us places. If we live for today only, we will miss what God is preparing us for tomorrow and where He is taking us on this journey called life. Got wrote down here, the most miserable person in the world is the person who does not know, experience, feel, and practice the love of God in his heart. This little note in the front of my Bible. This is not a word about God, nor is it a book that contains some of the word of God. It is the Word of God, infallible, inerrant, indispensable. Everything that I know about God, I learned from this book. Everything that I know about the redemptive power of Jesus Christ, I learned from this book. All that I know about Satan, the devil, the God of this present world, the prince and the power of the air, 
I learned from the Bible, the Word of God. Everything I know about living a life that pleases God came from the teachings of this book. This book is the most transforming book ever written. It is the believer's roadmap for life. It is the Christian soldier's marching orders. It is God's love letter to his children. It is the book of all books. And he who reads and studies and believes this book will be able to live a life that pleases God. It is the Word of God. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 22, Jesus told His disciples, have faith in God. In Luke chapter 8 verse 25, when the disciples woke up in the midst of a storm in the middle of the night on the sea of Galilee and said, Lord, we perish. Jesus asked this question, where is your faith? In Luke chapter 17 and verse 5, when Jesus instructed his disciples about the authenticity of forgiveness toward other people, the disciples simply responded, Lord, Increase our faith. Romans chapter 3 and verse 28. He said, therefore we conclude that man is justified by faith. Romans 5 and verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 14 and verse 23, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13, He says, Stand fast in the faith. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, We walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 11, Wherefore also we always pray for you, that our God would count you worthy of His calling, and fulfill all of His good pleasure, of His goodness, and the work of faith with power. In the King James Version, the word faith appears 336 times. You see, faith is the foundation. It is the human response to God's grace. It is the foundation of our salvation. The grace of God is the expression of God's goodness towards sinful, undeserving man. And this grace is the basis of our salvation. Saving faith is part of the human response to God's grace that brings salvation and forgiveness into man's life. Faith is the foundation of the Christian life. In this first verse of Hebrews chapter 11, it's not so much a definition of what faith is, as rather it is a description of what faith does. In verse 6 of Hebrews 11, For without faith it is impossible to please God. You notice how it starts out. He says, now faith. And you notice wherever you put the emphasis, it is now faith. Not faith for tomorrow. Not faith for yesterday. But it is now present faith in our hearts. 
And in this 11th chapter, there are two truths concerning its activity in the Word of God. First of all, the Bible said, faith provides substance. The, the, the Greek word hypothesis means assurance. He is saying that faith is the substance. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Secondly, faith provides evidence. It provides proof. In other words, it is this faith that we have that gives us assurance. And this assurance that it gives is evidence. And therefore, it becomes a conviction in man's heart. The, 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 the difference between assurance and evidence would be minimal. Were it not for in the Word of God, verse 1, that He gives us a qualifying of each. He said assurance is for things hoped for. Evidence are for the things not seen. The first involves future hope. The second involves present realities that are unseen. The first includes hope of the resurrection. Hope of the return of Jesus Christ. It is hope for the glorification of the saints. It is hope that when we leave this life, we will one day be resurrected to spend eternity with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in that place called heaven. Jesus said in John chapter 14, He said, You believe in God, Believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. We must have faith in the statement, the promise, that Jesus, Jesus gave us, and therefore we have the assurance that we believe in our heart that to be absent from this body is one day to be present from or with the Lord. When you read that, you believe it according, and it gives us eternal security. It gives us assurance. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 14 said, For we are made partakers of Christ. That's something that is presently going on. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, our assurance, steadfast unto the end. We live a life of enduring faith. We are living our life based upon the promises that God gave us in His Word. And it becomes assurance in our hearts. He says over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, But I would have you not be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep, that you sorrow not as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep those who have died in Jesus Christ one day, He will bring them with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, which we which are alive and remain till the coming of the Lord shall not prevent those which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and we believe that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. That is the assurance that is the hope. That is the strength when we have to stand next to the casket or the grave of someone that we've loved. We have the assurance. We have faith that God has promised that we've not seen them for the last time. This is what hope that we have. 
It is the guarantee of our eternal existence in Jesus Christ. That faith becomes our assurance. The second aspect involves unseen realities. When he said it is the evidence of things hoped for. What are those things? Well, the forgiveness of sins. We believe that through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross, and that fact that He is in right now in heaven making intercession for us, that is our hope. Over in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, he tells us there's one God and there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. He says in Hebrews 7 and verse 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth. To make intercession for us. What does it mean to be saved to the uttermost? It means that everything in our past, everything in our present, everything in our future has been secured by the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross. He says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 34, It is Christ that died, yea rather, that is risen again who is right now at the right hand of God to make intercession for us. He says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy place made without hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself. And He now appears in the presence of God for us. May I tell you that the Word of God is trying to tell us the Lord Jesus is not in heaven relaxing today and adoring simply the worship of angels and the redeemed of the saints. Oh no, Jesus Christ is busy every moment of every day in that place making intercession for us. Every time we sin, every time we fall, the Lord Jesus stands next to the Father and said, I've paid for that sin. That sin is forgiven based upon my sacrifice. He's made, making intercession for us. Folks, that is the evidence. That is the hope that we have. That's why in 1 John 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Hope is faith relating to the future. And conviction in in faith is the fact it relates to our personal life today. I believe that Jesus Christ will one day come again. I believe that one day I will live in the heavens with the Lord. But I have a daily conviction in my life today that God is present in my life today. We pray to a God whom we've never seen. And we have a conviction that He will answer. Believing faith in the Word of God. We believe that this book is The Word of God. It is a revelation of God Himself. You see, faith treats the things hoped for as fact. And we place confidence today in what has been promised for the future. And we live presently with absolute conviction. We have no doubts based upon the unchangeable, perfect character that God's promises will be fulfilled in the believer's life. That's what faith is. For the unbeliever, the unbeliever says, well, seeing is believing. The believer says, no, believing is seeing. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 7 He said, now by faith Noah, 
being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, and by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Verse number 27, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Moses moved knowing that God had spoken and God was present and God was with him even though with the naked eye he could not see him. Romans chapter 8 and verse 24 For we are saved by hope. But hope that is not seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things that we see, they are temporal. But the things that we do not see, they are eternal. He says in Second Corinthians 5, And verse 7, for we walk, we live by faith and not by sight. Over in 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9, whom having not seen, you love. In whom though you see him not, yet believing we we rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. By faith we trust, we love, we serve, we worship. We are obedient to the great creator of this universe who has revealed himself, his will, his way, his way through his written word. And God has made himself knowable through the person of Jesus Christ, the incarnate Word. That's how the book of Hebrews starts out in chapter 1. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake unto the fathers and the prophets, but yet he hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of His glory, and Jesus Christ is the express image of His person. He upholds all things by the word of His power. And when He Himself had purged our sins, He sat down on the right hand of the majesty upon high. He tells us over in the book of of Colossians, chapter number 1 and verse 15, He is the image of, of the invisible God. Here in Second Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, Jesus Christ is the image of an invisible God. In Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, He is the express image of God the Father. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, He is the express image of the brightness of the glory of God. Gee, God was invisible. God was unknowable. God was unapproachable. And Jesus Christ came to this earth and took on a body and we saw God in human flesh and He tabernacled among men and we can know Him because He is the express image of the Father. He tells us over in the Gospel of John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And that light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 12, And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to as many that believe upon his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but the will of God. And the Word was made flesh. 
And he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. To come to Jesus Christ by faith. To believe that he is God in human flesh. To believe that the sinless life that he lived was imputed to us and his righteousness covered our sinless sinfulness. And through Jesus Christ, our life could be changed. That takes faith. That faith becomes substance. It becomes reality when our life is changed by the power of God. You see, it is through faith that we look at the, the, the marvelous creation of God and we watch the daily handiwork of God upon this universe. We wake up in the morning and see every morning that sun rises in the eastern sky. We watch it as it lights the earth and sets in the western sky. We watch as God keeps the planets upon their course. He keeps the universe active. He creates the, the winds and He creates the tides and the morning tide. And He makes life livable upon this earth. And when we witness all of that, we have no doubt that there is a God in heaven. He says, verse 3, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So that things which were not seen were made, which do appear. We have the assurance. We have the evidence that there is a God who created this universe who loves us so much that He <clears throat> sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us, to forgive us of our sinful existence. And so God spoke this world into existence in six days of creation, and on that seventh day He rested. We have the assurance because it is described for us in the Word of God in the first book of this Bible, Genesis chapter 1. And then you move over in the book of Romans, you see this marvelous truth revealed. In Romans chapter 1, he teaches us that God revealed Himself through creation. And when man looked at this creation that God created, there's absolutely no doubt that only God could have orchestrated this thing called planet Earth and to watch humanity and the reproductive act of all the creations of the earth. It is God's hand upon creation. He tells us in Romans chapter 2 that God reveals Himself not only in creation, but in chapter 2 He reveals Himself in human consciences. He tells us that when man, he lived with a sense of justice and rightness. You don't have to tell somebody when they do something wrong. They have a conscience that tells them this was not right, this was wrong. It reveals to us that we believe in a God of justice and rightness. And then in chapter 3 of the book in Romans, he reveals himself through Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ was God's perfect Son who lived a sinless, impeccable life. And then He charged that life to our account. Faith. Faith. We pray to an awesome God. Because His Word tells us that we, through Jesus Christ, can come boldly to the throne of grace. Listen to the writer of Hebrews in chapter 4 starting at verse number 10. He said, for he has entered into rest. He has also ceased from his own work as God did. Jesus Christ entered that place. The work of redemption had been completed. Let us now labor therefore to enter into his rest. Lest by any man fall after the example of unbelief that he has no faith. For the word of God is quick. It is powerful, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And the Word of God is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Every time you read a word from this book, a verse from this book, a page from this book, a chapter from this book, while you're reading it, it 
is reading you. That's why great conviction comes upon the heart and soul of the person when he's front confronted with the Word of God because the Word of God is the living Word of God and God breathes on every page of this book. You want a life changed? Read the Word of God. As you read the Word of God, the Word of God will reveal to you who you are and what you are. And then he continues on. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Every day, every man on the face of this planet is confronted with the person of God. Every time he looks at his creation, every time he come, is confronted with another human being who God made in his image, we all have to deal with God, whether we want to or not. Seeing then, we have a great high priest who is passed into the heavens. Who is he? Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our Profession, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. I believe if I put my faith and my trust in Him, He will forgive me of my sin. He will blot out all my ugly yesterday and He will secure my future and my eternity. I hold that profession every day of my life. That is the confidence that I have in the Word of God, and it is the substance of all my assurance. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus Christ knows where you're at today. He knows what's going on in your life today. He knows your victories. He knows your defeats. He knows your fears. He knows your frustrations. He knows the things you're confronted with, the things that cause you maybe to be fearful and worry. Jesus Christ is, he, he, he's been touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Right now, where you're sitting in this room or at home watching on the internet, God knows what's going on in your life. And He is touched. He's moved with compassion and care because He wants to be close to you and He wants you to be close. Everything that's going on in your life, it is God trying to draw you to His bosom so that He might love you and secure you and that you might be one with Him. And yet He was tempted in all points, like as we are. Over in the gospel or the epistle of First John, chapter 2, he tells us all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but they're of the devil. That's saying this, that when Satan attacks our life, he has three bullets in his gun. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And every sin that man can commit falls into one of those three categories. And we look in Matthew chapter 4 when the Lord Jesus went out into the wilderness of 40 days and 40 nights to be tempted of the evil one. And Satan tempted him in three areas. The lust of the flesh. Turn this bread. Turn this rock into bread and eat. Man doesn't live by bread alone. He took him up the pinnacle of the temple and said, Cast yourself down. Will not the angels have charge over thee? The lust of the flesh. Then he said, listen. He said, took him up and said, look at the world. This whole world. If you'll bow down and worship me, I will give you the whole world. You don't have to go to the cross. I'll give it to you. And you notice something, church? Jesus did not rebuke him. Jesus didn't say it's not yours to give. Why? Because he is the God of this present world. He took that dominion from Adam when he deceived Adam in the Garden of Eden and they ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil of that tree. He took away the dominion of this world in Adam's hand and Satan holds it today. And Jesus Christ came to defeat the power of Satan in our life. 
He was tempted in all points like as we are. Yet He was without sin. And He took that sinless life and allowed sinful men to put Him on a cross by the constructed plan of God and He died and He paid for our sin. Because of that, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help just in time. Do you realize how much faith it takes to bow your head and say, I believe there's a God in heaven. And I believe that that God loves me. And I believe that He's never too busy to give attention to my voice, to my heart, to my prayer. And I believe that God can change my life. I believe He can work in the affairs of my life. And therefore, I will come boldly to the throne of mercy. That is faith. That is the evidence and the assurance that we know that God cares for us. Hebrews Hebrews 10 and verse 19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, to come into His presence, we can step in the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. He tells us in chapter 10 of Hebrews in verse 22, Let us draw near, with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, even though I know that my life is far less than what my life should be, even though I know sin may dwell in my heart, I can be washed clean in the presence of God and I can come and be sprinkled by the blood of Jesus Christ and have an evil conscience washed away. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For He is faithful that is promised. We can come into God's presence through the work of Jesus Christ. And we are to live our life by faith based upon our profession what is our profession I'm a sinner Jesus Christ Lord Jesus I believe when you died you died in my place I ask you to come into my heart convict me of my sin open the, my eyes and break away the blinding power of sin on my life and help me to Lord surrender my heart and life to you those of you watching online, those of you sitting in this auditorium, if, you, if your profession is, I am a Christian, here's what you are saying based upon the Word of God. I gave my sinful life to the Holy Son of God, knowing that He could change my life forever. And when you did that, your body became the purchased property of Jesus Christ. Now, every day of our life, we must hold fast that profession. Lord, I'm yours. Is there a God in heaven? Did His Son Jesus Christ die on a cross for our sins? Did God raise him from the dead, which tells us that there is an eternity and all of those in Christ Jesus receive the gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Thus we live our life in righteousness. Faith. It is the substance. It is the assurance of things hoped for. And it is the evidence, it is the holy 
conviction of our hearts that God is going to do in our life everything we want. Faith. Faith. It's the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. And that 11th chapter of Hebrews enumerates all the activities and actions that those people had based upon their faith. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? Close your eyes very tightly. And would you just for a moment humble your heart in the presence of God? Faith. What is it today that you need God to do in your life? You need Him to forgive you of some sin? Do you need God to increase your faith? Do you need a closer walk with God, a closer connection to the things of God? You need God to heal your wounded emotions. You need God to banish the fears that are in your life. You need God to touch your body physically. You need God to work in the life of maybe your wayward children or grandchildren. You need God to give you a reassurance of His commitment to you. If that's what you need, if any of those things or anything else troubling you, I beckon you this morning as your pastor to come to this altar in just a moment by faith and say, Lord, here's my need. I bring it to you by faith. You just stand with me. Stand with me, please. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Do you have a need that needs to be brought to God? I encourage you. Would you right now, just as Sharon plays, would you bring that to God? Would you have the courage to step out from where you're seated and just come and kneel for just a moment and say, Lord, Here's my need. Would you meet my need? That's faith. Amen. Every one of us have needs in our life. How big is it? Bring it to God. We're in His house. We're in His presence. He's all that we need. But oh, do we need. Father, there are those at this altar who are praying. There are those sitting and standing by their seat praying. There are those at home praying. And Lord, I pray today that you'll help us to live a life of faith. We live by convictions that you've given us from your word. Lord, you know the need of every person. I personally would ask you to do a special work in my life, special work in my mind, special work in my heart, a special work in my body, I might be everything that you desire me to be. Help me, Lord, to be the child of God you want me to be. Help me to be an obedient son. Help me, Lord, to be a good husband to Debbie. Good father and grandfather to my children. Help me, Lord, to be a good son to my mother. A good brother to my sister. Help me, Lord, to be the pastor you need me to be of this precious flock that you've asked me to tend to for you. Help us, Lord, today to have greater faith than we've ever had. Lord, thank you. Would 
Jesus say? Have faith in God. They said, Lord, increase our faith. Isn't that a prayer we all should pray? Hey, I love you and pray that you have a blessed week. May your life count this week for Jesus Christ. And as you leave this place, may something happen in your life that can touch the life of somebody else. I love you, and if you'll give me just a moment, I'll see you by that back door. If you come that way, if you don't, you're on your own. <laughs>